The rumors are true. I moved. I've been gone off of YouTube because I moved, okay? And now here I am in a beautiful new location for everyone's viewing pleasure. In the time I've been away from posting on youtube.com slash jasminezade, I've had something on my mind. Not murder. But music merch. There's been a lot of artists on tour lately and rolling out albums, and that has sparked a lot of conversation online about today's artist merch and how it kind of sucks. My wonderful friend Clary actually tweeted, I think a lot of artist teams figured out that the fans will buy anything no matter how simple, cheap, slash ugly it is. So they just don't bother spending a lot of time, thought, slash money on merch anymore. So I ran to text her and be like, hey, can I make this into a YouTube video? And this is that YouTube video. So I didn't know this, but apparently music merch, or I guess merch, we'll just say merch throughout this video. Just know that I'm referring to music artist merch. I am aware that there can be all kinds of merch, but apparently merch wasn't like a popular thing to roll out and do until the 70s, which actually makes a lot of sense. Cause when you say like, oh, the golden days of merch or like old school merch, my mind immediately goes to like rock bands of the 70s. But yeah, in the earlier days of that decade, there would be fans, notably teenage fans who would draw like the band's name on their shirts or draw lyrics on their shirts and wear those to shows. And that would be the first ever like sign of merch. That's literally where merch came from. Me, once again, crediting teenage fangirls for literally everything. They literally invented merch. Like, what do you have to say about that? There's probably men too. I didn't, I don't know, but I'm just gonna pretend like it was women doing this. Yeah, but then the 60s roll around, you know how it is. There's new inventions that make it a lot easier to like mass produce merch or made it possible to mass produce merch. So then people started making it rather than drawing on shirts. And of course, music industry swims quickly realized that you could monetize merch and milk people for all their work. So then suddenly everyone wanted to make their own and it became like one of the most lucrative revenue streams in the music industry. And it's crazy because it still is. So then now you have artists having to sign merch contracts so they can get like a certain percentage of sales of merch. And that is how I am paying every member of One Direction's bills. But yeah, this begs the question, why did merch become so popular and stay that way to this day? What's the appeal of merch? Definitely because it's a defining thing, I think. Like the music that you listen to can say so much about you and your personality and your life. So if you're wearing a certain artist merch, you're sort of announcing yourself as a part of that group. And it's really fun and cool to go out in public and see other people wearing the merch of your faves. So you can spot them out and be like, hey, love your shirt and then you have like that moment of connection. I think it's just a good and easy way to express your personality and passions. And also I think it can help you feel closer to your favorite artists when you purchase their merch because you're supporting them directly in a way. And plus at the end of the day, merch is just memorabilia. Like decades and decades from now, I will still have my Taylor Swift folklore cardigan. And remember back in the day when I was like 18, 19, fighting for my life to get a folklore cardigan and I'll think of it fondly because it was a period in time. It was a moment in history. But I think merch was especially considered memorabilia in its early days because it wasn't just like a shirt that you would go and grab. It was like a symbol of a moment in history and people would travel all over the world to pick up like limited edition merch and collect it. I read an article about this by High Snobiety that called it literally a religious exercise in fandom, which could not have summarized it better. And it's still true to this day that it's like a religious exercise in fandom. But it was back then too. 60s, 70s, people start eating up merch, especially rock bands, like heavy metal, most especially rock bands. That style of like merch t-shirt and merch design was very popular and has stayed very popular and arguably has gotten even more popular, which is crazy. Like these bands get older and older and older, but their shirts like stay in style. The Led Zeppelin ones, Black Sabbath, Aerosmith, Pink Floyd, the Rolling Stones, Fleetwood Mac, ACDC. And they were designed so well that like I said, they stayed in popularity and now you can go grab them from like Forever 21, from like Urban Outfitters, which started the so infamous, can you name one song from the band on your shirt? argument because people would be wearing these band shirts all over the place when they have no idea who the band is. Guilty. I don't really wear shirts like that anymore but when I was a teenager oh my god. Also Jesus Christ what do you mean I'm not a teenager? Like why did I just say when I was a teenager? Like I'm fully not a teenager anymore. That's 
but we don't have time for that crisis but yeah i remember having uh, the who shirt that i styled frequently i had prince Def leopard guns and roses i can name some guns and roses songs though thanks to my mother. But yeah, I do think that 70s style merch cannot be beat. Like they are just keeping these stores in business. There's just something so mwah about the style, like clearly designed with artistry and care. And over time, lots of artists of today have tried to recreate this, like the heavy metal inspired look, which really reminds me of those popular metal One Direction, like up all night shirts that sold out like fucking crazy a couple years ago. But the thing is like, I feel like no other period of music has truly like reinvented a popular merch style that's as popular as this one. I'm not sure if we're ever gonna see something like it again. Like I wish I could say like, yeah, a new style will come and go, but I don't think anything will touch like the 70s heavy metal style of vintage t-shirt and merch, whatever, because today's merch, well, you saw the title of the video. I will say this 90s hip hop style of merch became really popular for a while though. I have no idea where this came from. People just started making these and now they're everywhere for literally every artist in existence, even if they're not hip hop artists. I mean, obviously it did come from 90s hip hop artists, but I'm saying I have no idea why it reappeared and became like a big thing to make and sell on Etsy. I think it's cute in a really camp way, but still not as popular as the 70s heavy metal style of merch, which again reiterates that we have no sense of direction for merch these days because we're just copying merch from the old days and selling it as like vintage merch. So I'm thinking like maybe the 90s was the last time merch was actually really cool. In the mainstream anyway. I know what you're thinking, like mm, my favorite indie artist has really cute merch. I'm just talking about mainstream merch. So we have cool merch going on in the late 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, but then you get to the early 2000s, into the 2010s, and merch just goes downhill. I spent hours of my time hunched over my MacBook like a little gremlin, tirelessly searching different artist merch, official merch, and just like looking at the designs. Gaga, Bieber, Katy Perry, Rihanna, Taylor, One Direction. And what did I conclude? Ugly. No creative vision at all. Like most times it's just the name of the tour on the shirt or like a picture of the album cover on the shirt. Like Pixar, Microsoft, Office Word, ass font just on the shirt. Zero effort. It's giving graphic design is my passion. If you know what I mean. It is just lazy and ugly. Boring, yawning, sloppy, lazy. It's just miles and miles somehow from where we started with the really cool rock band merch. What is going on? It's like nobody wants to work these days. Get your fucking ass up and make cute merch. I think it's even worse though because not only is the merch lazy, uncreative, ugly, whatever, but it's also low quality and expensive. Like remember that one time I went to Eros Tour and I bought the tote bag for like $40 and it ended up being the most like small, flimsy, terrible quality tote bag I've ever had. And the strap is super short. I can't even wear it like a bag. And I know it's like, it's my fault for buying it, but I, I, I don't know, my, I just blacked out. My life flashed before my eyes. I got up to that merch stand and I saw the tote and I said, I need that to commemorate this day. It was opening night, like not only at shows though, but a lot of artists like sell their merch in their merch stores online too. And when you buy merch online, it could easily cost like over a hundred dollars. And that's the other thing, like merch and technology has evolved so much that now there's so many places you can get merch and there's so many pieces of merch you can get, like you got options. And it becomes so oversaturated that these like industry people are able to pump out more and more and more and keep increasing and increasing prices just to profit off of these fans fandoms and fangirls or whatever else as much as possible. Plus, if they spend low amounts for cheaply made merch and then sell it for a fuck ton more than they spend, that's easy profit for them. If you learn anything from me right now, it's that the music industry doesn't care about you. Their eyes are on your debit card, babe. But going back to my friend Clary's tweet from earlier when she was talking about how they're getting away with this because people are buying it no matter what it looks like, that's the exact reason why this is happening and will continue to happen because fans give in every time. Why would these industry people spend all their time and care and lots of money to make high quality merch when the fans are gonna buy it either way. Like no matter what it looks like, no matter what the quality is, you might as well just save your effort and save your money. Like Harry Styles' team put out this. <laughs> 
and this and this and y'all ran for your wallets not me harry's not the only one by the way that's just my mind just went to his fine line merch a lot of other artists are guilty But yeah, the problem might fix itself a little bit better if we would all just refuse to buy ugly low quality merch, I'm just saying. Me, when I single-handedly end ugly merch with this video, just because I said, don't buy it. Your best bet actually is to buy fan-made merch instead of official merch. Fans are the best at everything. It's so interesting that we circled back to fan-made merch being popular because that's literally how merch got started in the first place. Like I said earlier, teenagers would like draw on their shirts and wear it to shows and that's kind of how the idea for merch in the music industry anyway got kicked off. And like one of the first pieces of official merch ever made was actually done by someone in an Elvis fan club and it like took off completely from there. And these days fan-made merch is a complete craze. People design and sell their own merch on platforms like Etsy most especially. And that evolved into fans like making their own small businesses like off of the Etsy platform They'll make their own website with their own branding and matching social media They'll get like influencers and fangirls to promo the items and give them discount codes to give out for promo They'll have the fangirls wear the merch on TikTok or in YouTube videos I literally used to be a brand ambassador for a small like One Direction merch company back in like the COVID days. And you know what? Nine times out of 10, the fan made merch is better than the official merch. And why? Because fans care. They gaff. <laughs> they give a fuck. Fans just have this amazing ability to make exactly what people wanna see because they know what people like them wanna see. They are fans themselves. Fans are also the best at marketing, music marketing in the world because they know what gets the people going as one of the people. And plus as fans themselves, they have the passion for fandom to create something people actually wanna wear. It's not like I'm trying to steal money from these poor unsuspecting people. It's like I have a passion for this artist and their fans and I wanna make something that they wanna wear. Me, once again, begging big labels and artists to hire fans to work on stuff for them. Merch designers, tour photographers, social media managers, like you need fans. These fans do what we want. And you know what? What do we want? What makes a good piece of merch? And who in the industry has good merch? You see how I did that transition into the next topic? I'm so good. First of all, the merch is wearable. In the sense that you can put it on and go out to get coffee or something and the design is cute like a regular piece of clothing. We do not want a hoodie that says Taylor Swift across the chest in an ugly ass font. If I'm going to pay for merch, I want it to be stylish so I can wear it, you know what I mean? If you are a merch designer, you should be finding really decorative fonts, not fucking Times New Roman. You <laughs> or Comic Sans, that is tragic. You need to find decorative fonts, playful fonts, in your face fonts that are really cool and do designs with them. You could play around with the word placement. It doesn't just have to be words across the chest. You could play around with the, the placement of the words. Not even just the placement, but you can also add really cool effects and different colors to make the words prettier or better or whatever. Second, it's on brand. Y'all knew I was gonna say this. <laughs> I love being predictable. But yeah, I've given the artist branding speech so many times on this channel. It's so necessary in music these days to have a specific like theme or aesthetic about you, whether in general or throughout your album cycle. So you should be branding your merch so that it's identifiable to you. Make it on theme with your album. Make it on theme with the tour, like whatever you're doing. I think the word aesthetic is obviously very, very overused these days. But whatever I'm gonna say it, you should be able to look at your merch and say what aesthetic does this have is this aesthetic in general can someone wear this in public and then another person can look at it and be like oh that's definitely so and so's merch it's in their aesthetic and then three the quality of your merch matches the price of your merch i get it you guys want to save money and time making merch and when i say you guys i'm talking about the people in the industry who make merch but if your merch is cheaply made i just feel like it should be cheap to buy it I will pay a little bit more for a hoodie if it's good quality. Immediately, I'm thinking of Harry Styles' OG, like, treat people with kindness hoodies, the black and gray ones with the rainbow letters across the chest. Those were champion hoodies, and they are so good quality. So good quality, so buttery soft, and they just fit really nice and snug. I would pay a little bit more for a hoodie like that. But if it's Shein material, I want Shein prices. And I'm sure there's, like, some manufacturer out there who's gonna watch this video and be in my comments like, 
you just don't get it. The process is more complex than that. You're right, I don't get it. I'm just a girl and I also don't care. Let's look at some pieces of merch that I think were done perfectly and kind of pull these ideas together. Like this is a great example of cute merch. Like I said already, the Treat People With Kindness hoodies that Harry Styles put out, mwah, so cute. I know it sounds kind of basic, like just putting your catchphrase across the chest. I literally said don't put words, but I think there is such a big difference between just like slapping your name on there and putting something that's unique to your brand. Like it makes sense that his hoodies would say treat people with kindness. That's very hairy core, very hairy unique and hairy specific. And plus the way that it was done in the tiny rainbow letters against like a black hoodie or against a gray hoodie, so cute. Again, aesthetic. You could find this on someone's Pinterest board. I could wear this out in the street and it would look so cute. And plus the quality was amazing. Olivia Rodrigo, perfect merch. Not all her pieces, let me say, but most of the pieces that she has in her store. I was immediately blown away when she did her Sour Era merch and I love that she modeled it herself and all of her stuff, not all of her stuff, but a lot of her stuff is super wearable. Like you can go out in the street and this looks super cute. You can literally wear her merch to concerts and it looks like a concert outfit. Like it's just so cute and very, very, very on brand. So I think she did a great job. I don't know anything about the quality of Olivia's merch. I have a Sour hoodie that's really good quality, the purple butterfly one, but I don't know about her shirts and other stuff because I haven't bought it, but oh my God, Louis Tomlinson, same thing. Perfect merch. Not all his pieces, but most of them are so good. His hoodies are also really, really good quality. I have the OG Walls hoodies. Those are so cute. His logo is on it, the smiley. So it's very Louis specific and on brand. And then I love that it has Walls, 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 Walls going down the back, which is his album. And he did this in a bunch of different colors. The white and pink one is so fucking cute. Like, and he has some really cool graphic design on his stuff, especially in the Faith in the Future era. Like you can tell that someone designed this with a lot of care and thought and I love it. Taylor folklore cardigans one of the best pieces of merch I've ever seen I'm not even exaggerating like I know I'm a Swifty but like even if I wasn't a Swifty just from an industry standpoint I would be like this is literally fucking perfect her having that cardigan on in the cardigan music video and then releasing them for people to buy oh my god literally the best idea ever it's great quality I love my folklore cardigan it's super super cute and aesthetic it matches the folklore era beautifully and it's something that you're gonna again like I said earlier see in your closet years and years from now and remember that time in your life so fondly I have a strong feeling that in the future folklore cardigans are gonna be like that piece of vintage merch that everyone wants their hands on like old school vintage folklore cardigans. People are gonna want that. And they're gonna be like, huh, I wish I was a teen during the folklore era. But my other controversial opinion on this is that I don't think she should have sold cardigans for all the albums. I think she should have done the folklore cardigan and stopped and kept it at that. I don't understand this Speak Now cardigan, 1989 cardigan, like red cardigan, why? <laughs> The cardigan was so specific to the folklore era and it was so perfect for that. I think she was just oversaturating it and doing too much trying to release a cardigan for every album. I think it should have stayed folklore specific. That's my only complaint. Another one I love is Sabrina Carpenter's I Heart Sluts shirt. I think I talked about this before in my Sabrina video. It is on the basic side, I get that, but it's so cute, like so with the times. The I Heart blank stuff is so popular right now and super in style. So like capitalizing off of that was really perfect, like a great idea. And I just think the slut touch was perfect because of her song, Because I Liked a Boy, like making the slut narrative her brand very, very identifiable. Like you see someone with that shirt on, it's very, very identifiable. Yes, basic, but like she made it her own in a perfect way. Oh my God, Scissors, um, SOS Glow Tea. This is a perfect example of how a cool font and design can make something so simple look so cool. Clearly someone who knows like graphic design did this and it did not come off of Pixar. It just looks amazing. And also another band that I think has really good merch is Five Seconds of Summer, surprisingly. I didn't realize they had such cute merch, but I was looking into a bunch of different artists and I stumbled across them and their merch is so good. And it's always the people in rock, always the people in rock genres who have the best fucking merch. Like this is crazy. Just some quick honorable mentions that I found last minute. Ariana Grande's Eternal Sunshine merch is actually really cute and surprisingly, Nicki Minaj has some really cute and super unique Pink Friday merch. 
Which, speaking of rock, that also reminds me to reiterate, I know in this video I'm focusing so much on like mainstream artists, especially in pop, but that's kind of the point of the video. I know a lot of indie and underground artists specifically have amazing merch. And once again, it's because they give a fuck. They gaff. <laughs> They have to make cute designs to sell it because they don't have the luxury of a humongous fan base that will buy whatever they put out. So that's why I kind of didn't talk about like underground slash indie artists, but I get it. I know they're out there. I hear you. But yeah, merch, it's mostly ugly, mostly expensive. There are some gems that you can find in there. Merch is cute sometimes, but for the most part, we have just declined. No, I don't think a new distinctive style of merch will like come into play and be remembered for like in this time. Um, I think it's very individual branded at this point it's not like this is the current merch style it's like this is what each artist wants to do with their merch for every era so i guess at this point we can only hope that in the future more artists come along who really care about this kind of thing but again like i said earlier it's kind of our issue like if y'all keep buying the ugly merch they're gonna keep rolling it out so think long and hard before you press purchase or before you press add to cart or before you go up to that merch booth and hand over your money thank you guys so much for watching my video you are paying my rent by watching my videos so i really deeply appreciate your time and attention subscribe for more nonsense about music a lot of albums are coming out this year you guys so many um so i'm going to be reacting to albums left and right on this channel so subscribe turn my notifications on join the party I love you so much i hope you have a great day and i will see you in my next video